Does God have a plan for your life? Absolutely. God has a plan for everybody's life. There is no one listening to me that is an accident. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us this in the book of Jeremiah chapter one, that before, before we were formed in our mother's womb, that God knew us and he had called us and had a plan for uh, our life. The scripture also tells us that God knows the, the plans he has for us to give us a future and a hope. God is not destined that you be a loser. God is not destined that you have a hard life. You have a future and you have a hope in God. A lot of people ask this question because they don't see the plan of God working in their life. And a lot of that is because they're depending on God to do everything. But let me just tell you this, God's plan for your life, whether that's fulfilled or not, is up to you, it's not up to God. God will work with you, but he doesn't do it for you. The Bible tells us the Holy Spirit is our helper, not our doer. See, when someone helps you, they don't do it for you, they assist you in doing it and doing whatever, whatever, whatever it is you're planning on doing. So when the Holy Spirit is our helper, he helps and works with you. Jesus said this, that he, as he would go, he told the disciples to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. And the Bible says, and the Lord working with them, confirming his word with signs following. You see, they had to go and do, and the Lord would work with them. The Holy Spirit being our helper helps us to do things. He doesn't do it all for us. Just a good case in point. Um, whenever I went to, um, Sweden uh, to, um, to pastor our church that I'd started over there. When I started the church, uh, there was a man who came to the church uh, it, it, because he'd heard how the things that were happening in our city. You see, when our church started in Sweden, it was kind of big news. It made it all, all the papers. It went all around Scandinavia. And this man came from Norway and uh, he had told us a story. He said, you know, he said, I used to be an evangelist and there used to be a center of revival in this city, the place where I started my church. And he said, and the whole thing started kind of falling apart. And, and the Lord spoke to me very clearly as I tried to hold it together. And the Lord said, don't worry, I have another move of my spirit planned for this place. And you'll recognize it when it arrives because it will carry the name Agape on it. Well, when I started my church in Sweden, I called it Agape. Not because I wanted to, because let's be, let's be honest, most people, most people don't even know what that means, what it is. People call it Agape, Agape. Um, you tell people, hey, uh, it's a Greek word, and they say, oh, so you're Greek Orthodox. No, I'm not Greek or Orthodox. I mean, it conjures up a lot of questions more than it answers questions. So I didn't want to call it that, but nonetheless, I did because I felt impressed to do so. And he said, uh, so this man shows up, and he says, when I saw this church start, and I saw its name, I knew this is what God had promised me back when I was a young man. And, uh, and I asked him the year the Lord had told him that, and when he told me the year it was, I realized that when the Lord had spoken this to him, I was four years old. My associate pastor was two years old. And I knew at that moment, more than any other time, that I had a destiny. But you see, whether I fulfilled that destiny or not, it was not up to God, it was up to me. It was up to me to hear from the voice of the Lord and then to do what he told me to do. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you and called you, has a plan and a purpose. Everybody has a plan for their life, ordained and given by God.